when i was running rakum school for the blind many people came and told me charge them at least something don't give everything free because they will not understand the value of free if you charge them they'll understand the value then i told them the story mother teresa before coming to bangalore she was invited by the chamber of commerce of bangalore to visit bangalore so she told her sisters to pack and get ready before going to bangalore sisters asked mother how many bags should i pack it because bangalore was a rich city and the chamber of commerce is going to give her a lot of money mother just winked and they landed up in bangalore city and just she moved to the program site where the chamber of commerce president invited her and mother got up and said everybody stand up let us first pray to the master of the house the god for a minute and every everybody stood up they prayed then they sat and then the president the chamber of commerce took the mic and said mother everything what you do is fantastic you beautiful we all love you for the work you done but giving everything free of cost is what we don't understand you should at least charge them a small amount of money only then they'll know the value and everybody in the hall said yes this is what mother said what the president of the chamber of commerce said was right when mother's turn came when the chamber of commerce said that mother was a bit shaken it seems so mother's uh, uh, chance came to speak mother said uh, to everybody you are all in this hall you all listen to what the president said and everybody said yes and you all know what the president said is 100% right and they all said yes and mother looked one more round and they said are you all breathing and everybody in the chamber of commerce they said yes we are all breathing suppose god is supposed to send you a bill for every time you breathe how much you owe to god and every time you smile at a person and god is supposed to send you a bill how much do you owe god that's not a silence and everybody got give her a standing ovation and sisters rushed up to mother mother what happened to you mother said the president gave me one punch i got knocked down he looked like a mohammed ali and i was i must get up before the count of 9 i was calling jesus and suddenly from nowhere this answer came i never prepared it up so i told them the story the same story then they asked me so many grown up girls are there so many big boys are there why are you keeping them all over here today and tomorrow hmm? they can stand on their own legs you will get a bad name by keeping big girls they are always the girl girl boy boy i did not bother i said good or bad i did not start the school for good or bad i came here to serve good and bad bad is for the people to throw the judgment not me and now i see if i do not they said up to fourth standard up to seventh standard keep the girls up to send them off i drag them off to post graduation boys as well as girls they did the post graduation and me they did the ba they became teachers of the same school they became the headmistress head master principals of all the three schools i am running <laughs> they wrote civil service exams all got married said if i go now i'm not telling they will uh, fall on the half way through on, on the way but you should not get bothered by this or that then you cannot lead moses ben maimon born on 30th march 1138 in spain died in 12 december 1204 in egypt egypt commonly known as maimonides was a medieval sephardic jewish philosopher who became one of the most prolific and influential torah scholars of the middle ages in his time he was also a preeminent astronomer and physician serving as a personal physician of saladin born in cordoba almoravid empire present day spain on passover eve 1130 he worked as a rabbi physician philosopher in morocco and egypt he died in egypt on 12 december 1204 when his body was taken to the lower galilee and buried in tiberias moses ben maimon 
commonly known as Maimonides, said, Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Here in Rakum school, I said, I will give them the fish and I will teach them also to fish also. <laughs> yes. Teach, give a man a fish and feed him for a day. Yes. But if you are a leader, you can feed you feed the fish and teach them how to fish also. That one disconnection was where it went wrong. Most of the upper caste call it as the rich, the powerful, all the prominent leaders, they keep giving the fish and they forget to teach them. And not that they forget, they do not want to teach them because they are looking for slaves. With that situation, then Maimonides, Maimonides said was correct. Give a man a fish and you can feed him for a day. Yes, the parents in the house. If you keep feeding them, yes, then you, you will feed them for a day. But teach the child to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Yes, parents, that, that one disconnection of the, of, the, of the tuition masters, tuition centers, sending them to the high-tech schools, just just you send them to the high tech schools to international schools to teach the, the international school teach the children to rob you teach the children to not to listen to you teach the children to always argue back to you disturb you at the end of the day they leave the house and go far away praying that you die or you they want to throw you into the Old each home. That is not that will become a man, give a man a fish and feed him for a day. That is the day, yes. But teach a man, teach a child to fish and you will feed him for a lifetime. That is just Sanskriti. Every house has got a Sanskriti a culture, a beautiful culture, like Suresh Nesarki was telling. My wife listened to your lectures. And she comes from a very beautiful family. And the family is full of Sanskrit culture. She follows 100%. The house is so beautiful. Kavita Rani went to see the house. She was shocked to see the house so beautifully kept. And uh, Suresh was telling that was the Sanskrit. Teach the Sanskrit. Suresh, I don't have to bother. She is one of the best cooks in the whole world. The best mother, the best wife, the best grandmother. And the beauty from where it is a Sanskrit Suresh is telling she comes from Maharashtra from a very good noble family and their Sanskrit is still in every drop of her movement that is what we are looking then teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime all parents must understand you have destroyed your kids you got carried away you were a slave come out of that slavery i am asking come out of your slavery dear parents they have hypnotized you they have given you a software engineer job given you a big money and you are thinking big money is to go to another torturous you have been tortured with a big money in the big building you yourself knew and knowingly you took the money and sent the children to the big building thinking that in that build, big building the children will grow beautifully no when you time you retire you are living in pain that children do not want even to massage your leg they do not even want to take bath with you they do not want to eat from the same plate they argue, they spit on you. For that you spend that much of money. One German guy came to me and he told me, Mr. Raku, I looked at Manipal Hospital. I looked at Apollo Hospital. I was shocked. India is such a poor country. And so many people I see slums and poor people. They are not getting proper medical support and I see this hospital so big how could this hospital become so big how could they construct such big beautiful buildings unless until they must have robbed by telling lies to the patients robbed money if they are not robbed if they don't need such big building you can see people are healthy on the street I was shocked he stood in front of Indranagar he looked at the buildings around Indranagar and said how come you are sitting here and begging for the food and these people are constructing huge, huge buildings. 
If they have constructed such huge building, they have such huge big cars and buildings, they must have robbed it from their workers. They did not share it. That is not Samskriti. This is the greed you have created and then you tell hmm, India is poor, you go to US and other countries and you know, spit on us together. Come, let us practice the Samskriti. Let us hug together, eat together, family sits together, father and mother do not know how to hug. Parents, father and mother do not know how to hug the children because there is bad touch and good touch is over there. Parents do not know how to take baths together. They don't grow even medicinal plants. They don't even practice yoga together. They don't even look at the sunlight but look at the electricity bulbs. 